The Archimedes principle is named after a Greek mathematician who lived over 2,000 years ago. It was also known as Archimedes of Syracuse. Syracuse is actually on the island of Sicily, which is just off the coast of Italy. But at the time, it was actually part of Greece. Now, Archimedes helped develop ideas about pi, spirals, water pumps, pulleys and levers. But he's probably best known for his principle on fluids. The statement about water, or indeed any other fluid, is rather brief, but has many practical everyday influences. It's as follows. Any object wholly or partially immersed in a fluid is buoyed up by a force equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the object. So what does this actually mean? Well, if we break it down and give some examples, maybe we can make it a little bit clearer. Talk about water since it's the liquid you're most likely to come across and it's also the easiest to visualise, but it holds true for any liquid. If you place an object in water that's light in the water and it floats on the water. However, not all of the object is lying on or above the waterline. A small proportion of the object is actually beneath the top level of the water. The larger the object is and the heavier it is, the more of the object is below the level of the water. Now, if you place the same object in air, fall to the ground under the force of gravity till it hit a solid surface, at which point it would stop falling. Gravity must in all cases be pulling down the object by the same amount each time. Also, there must be some other forces acting upwards to alter its behaviour. In air, there's a small amount of force just acting to stop the object falling. It's normally called wind resistance. This force isn't large enough to counter the force of gravity, so the object falls through the air. When the object hits the floor, it doesn't sink into the floor, so the floor is pushing up with a force equal to that of gravity. However, water does sink a little bit into the water. But what has happened to the water that used to be in the place where the object is now resting? The simple answer is that water has been displaced or moved, and the amount of water that's been moved is equal to the mass of the object resting on the water. If you add more mass to the floating object, it sinks deeper and moves more water as a result. Each time the object is pushing aside the water. Since water is a liquid and seemingly always in motion, this pushing or moving water out of the way until balance is achieved can be a little bit difficult to visualise. So, imagine something in a, say, a semi-liquid state like jelly or jello if you prefer. A weight placed on the top deforms the jelly as it's pressed down in the centre and it rises up around the edge. Now, something very similar is happening in the water. As if a dent has been created in the water by the object floating on top and that has the same mass of water being spread around the surface. And this leaves us with the object of what happens when something actually sinks in water, like say a gold bar. Now because the gold bar is denser than water, it sinks to the bottom. In fact, it's about 19.3 times denser than water, depending on the temperatures of both. This means that a 19.3 kilo bar of gold is only going to displace one kilo of water as it sinks. This is because one kilo of water occupies the same volume as does a 19.3 kilo bar of gold. However, like an object floating in water, according to Archimedes' principle, it too is being buoyed up by the water, even if it isn't floating. This means underwater, if you try to lift up the gold bar, it feels like you're only having to lift an 18.3 kilo gar bar of gold. As this, the bra bar breaks the surface of the water, it starts no longer being buoyed up by the water, until when it's totally clear, you're again lifting 19.3 kilos. That's why raising objects up from the bottom of the sea, a lot less dense than gold, can be fairly easy to get them up to the surface, but actually getting them out of the water becomes really difficult since they're no longer being buoyed up by the water. So there we have Archimedes, a little bit more than somebody sitting in a bath displacing water till it overflows.